Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's IT Tech Talk, What Happens When You SQL. In case this is your very first time joining us, welcome. The Tech Talk series focuses on different ways to help you make the most of your Splunk instance through short webinars that focus on apps and add-ons, features, best practices, and more. This is part two of this talk for the month where we're diving even deeper into this topic. And just as a reminder, if you have any questions today, feel free to use the Q&A window as we'll be answering those questions throughout the talk. My name is Caitlin Reynolds, and I'm a Product Marketing Manager here at Splunk, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Jeff Spencer, who is a Consulting Sales Engineer. He's going to walk you through today's talk and do a demo at the end. All right, Jeff, take it away. Thank you, Caitlin. Well, picking up from the last webinar, uh, we're discussing Microsoft SQL Server and Splunk. And uh, the agenda for this webinar is to go over um, where you may be able to observe uh, SQL traffic using some other technology from Splunk, um, what kinds of problems you can solve using Splunk for the use cases, uh, some out-of-the-box content for apps and add-ons, a demo of Splunk Stream, and uh, additional resources. The Splunk app for Stream provides packet analysis capabilities to Splunk through an app you can install on a Splunk Universal Forwarder or as a standalone Linux forwarder. Stream can decode packet data, including the tabular data system protocol, which is what Microsoft SQL Server uses. The TA can be found on Splunk Base by searching Splunk app for Stream. In addition to decoding packet data and forwarding its metadata, Stream can run in application detection mode to provide additional labeling to your network flow data and can estimate the volume of data that would be part of a stream. The Splunk Essentials for Wire Data app on Splunk Base provides a variety of use cases, including a subset that focus on database queries. Bringing in packet data from your Microsoft SQL servers can help you unlock insights from your data in a variety of ways. I'll give you a few examples. Query data can help in troubleshooting problems in your applications, identifying interesting patterns of behavior, helping with audit, compliance, or security investigation use cases, and query latency metrics for analyzing bottlenecks. I'll give you a quick overview of the out-of-the-box content for both of these apps. The Splunk app for Stream and the Splunk Essentials for Wire Data apps include protocol decoding for Microsoft SQL Server conversations, including metadata and packet data, among many other protocols, SIM-compliant source types for database queries, use case example searches, um, we'll start with the Microsoft SQL Server protocol features next. So what does the TA actually collect? You can have a look at the documentation on docs.splunk.com for more information. An installed Splunk Universal Forwarder or a standalone stream forwarder listen for network traffic that meet criteria determined by filters. With that data, conversations are assembled and then analyzed for aggregated or non-aggregated metadata, or packet data can be captured on an ongoing or on an as-needed ephemeral basis. In addition, Splunk App for Stream can extract additional data from payloads and supports receiving and processing NetFlow protocol data. And what can Splunk Stream collect specifically from Microsoft SQL Server? And, um, the following are a subset of the interesting fields that I saw for Microsoft SQL protocol data. Uh, you can see there the query information, affected table name, uh, the application, and then there are some performance metrics. Uh, but of course, the Splunk Stream supports so much more. We'll give you a list on the next. And the follow-up list, uh, there are two, the decodable protocols list, which are protocols that um, support exceptional uh, metadata extraction. Uh, and then the detection-only protocols, which are about identifying application traffic on top of, say, HTTP. Um, check out the documentation link at the bottom of this uh, page, and you can read the entire list, uh, which is ever-expanding with each release of the stream. So how, how do you get started? Uh, how you go about installing Splunk Stream in your environment depends on your architecture and where you can install a Stream Forwarder app or a standalone agent. In a distributed Splunk Enterprise deployment, you'll want to install the app components on the appropriate resources, for example, on your search heads, the deployment server, and indexers. 
If you have access to a network tap, you can install Stream on a dedicated capture host and direct the interesting traffic for its initial parsing and feeding to Splunk. And this diagram shows how data gets into Splunk. Packet data is collected by the stream forwarder and then is processed before being packaged to be delivered to Splunk via the Splunk Universal Forwarders protocol or in the Linux standalone agent scenario over the HTTP event collector. Next, I'll share the SIM compliant source types for databases in Splunk app for stream. To wrap up slides on the Splunk app for stream for a moment, let's take a quick look at SIM compliant features of database wire data decoded by stream. This includes features like the user, object, instance name, database version, the query, and the query execution time. I'll pop into a quick demo of Microsoft SQL wire data in Splunk app for stream. Welcome to my Splunk stream for Microsoft SQL Server Demo. Uh, I'm logged into Splunk Enterprise and a couple of things to note. So I've already configured a universal forwarder, much like I did last uh, time that we were together on a webinar. And uh, instead of sending the uh, add-on specifically for Microsoft SQL Server over, uh, what I've done is I have deployed in my server classes a stream agents server class. And the application that's assigned to that specific server class is the Splunk TA for stream. And if I go to my client's uh, page or tab, we can see here that the app stream TA forwarder is right here. And then this uh, same forwarder app that I installed before is present. And so that app server is running Windows Server 2016, and it has this TA installed. Uh, the way that it picks up its configuration is it pulls it directly from the Splunk app for stream on your Splunk environment. If I click there and show you more or less what we've configured, um, I'll go into configuration, into configure streams, and what that's going to give me is uh, are my metadata streams, my packet streams, and then ephemeral streams, which are basically created you know, as needed. Uh, I have modified a specific metadata stream. So if I scroll all the way down, TDS is the protocol that's used for Microsoft SQL Server. It's initially set to estimate. I've turned that to enabled. Uh, so you can see we've had a little bit of traffic come and go. Uh, that's ultimately how that comes in. If you want, you can edit this. There are a variety of features that you can select of this data. You can do aggregation. You can uh, send that to a specific index. Uh, I have more or less the default selected here, including things like the query, the response time, and um, those are the types of information that I think I'll use. Uh, more regularly. So that's uh, kind of how that works. Uh, let me give you a sense for what we see inside the app itself. If I go back to the first page of the app for stream and the uh, analytics overview, we can see the breakdown of traffic distribution from my clients. Uh, I can uh, look at the flow visualization, you know, where's the source IP versus the destination IP, how is that clustered? Uh, what does the web traffic look like? Uh, here's my database server response times that are showing up, uh, et cetera. And, and it's really interesting information. Let me show you what happens when we start to uh, work with my app server connecting to the database. I'll switch over to my RDP session. I've got a .NET application that I downloaded from Microsoft's GitHub, and I am going to run this command here, which will update my database. So this goes through connects and then uh, restructures the database according to the application's expectations. That'll take just a bit. All right, and before I run the application, once this, uh, once this comes back, uh, I want to show you the data that has come in. So here we have these queries that have been executed. I'll flip back over to Splunk. Let's go into search and reporting and take a look at my main index. So here we have a variety of source types. Uh, the one that I'm most interested in is, again, here, stream TDS. But you can see we've got IP level, TCP level, HTTP level, DNS, UDP even. Uh, the protocol support in stream is pretty fantastic. Uh, let's select stream TDS. So here we see select migration ID, product version, yada, yada. 
Uh, let me scroll back here. Where is that? Uh, select, let's see. Migration ID, product version from, yeah, so that's uh, that's the same query, right? Just executing over there. Uh, so interesting, you know, these are JSON objects. You can uh, work on any of those. Uh, I could, for example, look where uh, query equals star. So only events that have the actual query present. That might be interesting for me to build a table of data around. Um, you know, there's a lot that you can, of course, do with this. Uh, let me switch back and actually start my application. So this is going to take a little bit to load. I'm running that locally here, so that's on port 5000. Let me refresh this page. And sure enough, we can see some back-end kind of traffic running. Here I've got a to-do list app. I'll click Create New. Let's give it a description. This is my great to do, all right? And then I'll select a date. And if I click create, there we see that some stuff happened at the back end. I'll go back here, run this again. And sure enough, I have additional records present. So uh, as you can see, as changes are being made to the database or as queries are being executed against the database, uh, this type of information is being populated here as a result of the streaming network packet data that's being collected and then delivered. That's more or less just a brief introduction into how data is collected with Splunk Stream. And then again, these are some of the features that you can expect when you're working with your data. And let's go back to the presentation. And finally, the content included in the Splunk Essentials for Wire Data app. And now, the Splunk Essentials for Wire Data app. Rather than read from this slide, I'll show you the use cases in the following demo. And now, the demo for the Splunk Essentials for Wire Data application. Um, as you can see, there are 49 different examples of how Splunk can be used to deliver analytics on top of wire data using Splunk app for stream. Um, you can see there are a variety of categories. I'm going to focus on the database analysis section, but please uh, take a look at the list and see if there's anything else that you'd like to explore. Looking at the database analysis examples, we have a set of sample data along with use case descriptions and example searches that you can leverage as part of building your perspectives on top of your, uh, your SQL server data. Some of the examples that I like, you know, certainly at a basic level for search and investigation include looking for uh, slow transactions, looking at relationships between your databases, uh, finding long running transactions or slow transactions, uh, looking then at proactive monitoring, identifying when you might have a high degree of concurrency, uh, which IP addresses are connecting to your databases, and then even SQL injection use cases. And then finally, in terms of operational visibility, we have these nefarious queries as well as SQL injection. And we can look at some of these. Uh, I'll first start by taking a look at this average time taken per database transaction. If I click on that and look at the actual search, so here's the important part. Uh, if I copy this and then go to a new search tab, just one moment, and run index equals main source type equals stream TDS for my Microsoft SQL data, and then run the same query. Here I'm given the table. So here I've got a long running query. This is uh, descending sort. So creating that database was certainly the longest task that I gave uh, this database server. Um, but then, you know, iterating through some of the properties, creating tables, etc., those all took some time as well. Uh, if I go back here and we look at another use case, just a moment, I'll select, uh, as an example, this external address is connecting to the database. And, and granted, again, like I don't have a production database here, so the data won't be super interesting. But if I copy and paste that to this other search, same predicate, and then just replace it to something else. Uh, let's see. Let's not filter based on IP address. I know that I'm on a 10 dot uh, inside of Azure. So I'll run this again, and sure enough, there's my lonely app server IP address having connected a variety of times, or at least you know being uh, shown having conversations at least 47 times. 
So um, that's it from a, a preview. Certainly dig into the use cases and then apply them against your own data. Thanks very much. As we're nearing the end of the talk, I want to share a quick recap slide of the resources shared during the talk. You're welcome to screenshot these, though we'll also make these available in a follow-up email which will have the recorded webinar. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jeff, for sharing your knowledge on this topic with us today. Finally, don't forget that we have an incredible community of Splunk users on our community site. There you'll find a Q&A section where you can view and share best practices around any of these topics. There are ongoing discussions around our IT Tech Talks as well as an area called Splunk Ideas where you can actually request product enhancements to Splunk Solutions. If you want to learn more or continue the conversation, head on over there and I'm sure you'll find what you're looking for. Great. Well, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join us for this talk. Thanks again and we'll see you soon.